If you're looking for a really cute top that's not going to take a ton of time to make, well, let me tell you all about McCall 7540 because this might be the pattern that you need to add to your pattern stash. I'm Madi with Madi Sews, and thanks for hanging with me, you all. So today we're going to review McCall 7540. I'm going to tell you all about this pattern, and then we're going to go into how I chose my base pattern and made pattern changes to get this to fit pretty good in like pretty much zero time, like the night before I had to attend an event. Let me tell you, I felt like a million bucks. Kitana wins flawless victory. <laughs> I wore it with a matching pink pair of pants and I just felt like this top gave me that little bit of boost that I needed to walk into the event all by myself and make some new friends. <laughs> Let's get into these pattern details. This is because 7540 and it's a David Tutera pattern. So I made view A, which is this crop top right over here. It is a close fitting top. So you can see in all the views, this is a close fitting pattern and it has princess seams along the front. Now the fun thing about this pattern is that it does come with different cup sizes. So it comes with a, a B cup, a C cup, and a D cup. The cup sizes in the big four patterns are really a, just a good option. Now more about this pattern. It comes with the crop top and a skirt, the full dress with that overlay. The skirt on both of these is actually lined and then it comes with the jumpsuit option that has a different back. There is a different neckline option here so you can see that it has that notched neckline and this one I think that's called a jewel neckline. It has a much higher neckline which is what I opted to make for mine. Looking at the back, there is a zipper down the back and so it does have that separating zipper that you're going to need and the top is fully lined. And then here is the other version for the back. Now that's a really cute wrap version that you could easily add to either the pants or the dress. So, I mean, it's really nice to have those options. So looking at the top of my dress form here, my poor dress form's not as blessed as I am in the boob area, <laughs> but you can see that there are the princess seams here and I did do the D cup and we're gonna go into the sizing here in a little bit. I did have to raise the arm size significantly. When I did the tissue fitting for this top, a whole lot of my bra was visible. So I did have to raise that. And then I put a separating zipper in the back. Now you all, I had a bit of a make it work moment with this top. My zipper was just a little too short and <laughs> I ended up having to, well, kind of finagle the back neckline so that way it would end where my zipper does. This top is fully lined. I actually lined it with the same exact fabric that I used to make the pants that I wore with this top. Well, the actual fabrics that are recommended that you use by the pattern is satin, taffeta, and cotton blends. I didn't use any of those. I use sequins and um, this really kind of funky, funky poly slub type of fabric. It, it, it was really kind of a weird one. I think it's a poly blend. I'm not entirely sure. You all, we're gonna learn how to fit this pattern to our beautiful bodies. Whatever your current shape is, it's beautiful. So we're going to fit this pattern to our bodies. Let's go. Okay, so let's start at looking at the actual size chart that this pattern recommends. Now, if I were choosing a pattern based off of this, I would say, okay, well, let me look at my bust size. It's 44 inches. That puts me at a size 22. Now, from experience, I know that there's no way I'm going to make that size because it's going to result in huge arm size. I mean, the armholes are just going to be really big. And I might actually have issues with the shoulders not falling where they are or even a gaping neckline. With a big four, they kind of assume that 
you know, the bigger your measurements go, the bigger you get everywhere. And that's not, that's not entirely true. That's not how we all gain weight, right? So I don't use that measurement right there. This pattern is a little different from the typical. Typically I would do a size 18, I would do a full bust adjustment and all of that good jazz. But this pattern comes with finished garment measurements and cup sizes. You can see down here, all of the finished garment measurements are listed. So let's take a look at the actual pattern instructions because they tell you how to choose your cup size. Okay, so right here are the instructions for how to choose your cup size. And they have like this little worksheet that you can do. It's, it's pretty simple math, really. Basically, take your full bust measurement, so you know, around the fullest part of your bust, which is this number right here, number one. And then you're going to also take your high bust measurement, which is number two. You're gonna subtract the two, and then depending on how many inches you have, it'll determine the actual cup size that you need. Now, my full bust is 44, my high bust is 40. That gives me a four inch difference, so I'm going to make the D cup here. Now let's look at these finished measurements again. When I'm looking at the D cup, if I find my bust measurement, my full bust measurement of 44 and a half, that's putting me in at a size 18. But you have to remember that this is a finished garment measurement. It, this has absolutely no ease. And I know that for myself, I need about two inches of ease around my bust, even for a close fitting top. So I'm going to make this size that has a finished measurement of 46 and a half inches, which corresponds with the size 20. So the size I choose today is gonna to be this size 20 with a D cup. For me, I didn't wanna make multiple muslins of this top. I didn't want all of the different versions. Honestly, I didn't have time to make all of the different versions. So I opted to do a tissue fitting. If there are lining pieces that are the same exact pieces as the outside of the top, I will make the lining first and make sure that I have that fitting and then transfer any changes that I make to my sequins. So that way I'm only cutting out my expensive good stuff once. After you cut out your size pattern with the appropriate cups, in my case, that was pattern piece three, the bodice front with pattern piece six, that has the D cup, and you can see right over here, it's noted for the D cup. Pattern piece seven with pattern piece eight, and this is pattern piece eight. It doesn't matter if you have a D cup or not because it's a back piece and you don't have boobs on your back. No. And actually just make sure that both your front pieces, so piece three and piece six, both are for the appropriate cup size. Four pattern pieces, that's all that we're working with you all. Pretty nice. So now I'm gonna show you how to fit the front of your bodice using a tissue fitting method that I picked up in a class that I actually took at one of the local fabric stores. Draw your 5 8 seam allowance on that bust edge right there. And you're also going to wanna do it on the side of piece three right here where this cup attaches. So draw out your 5 8 seam allowance. And then after you're done with that 5 8 seam allowance, we're going to pin it together on that seam allowance. Okay, so there is nothing that is really crazy going on here. All that we're going to do is we're going to match up our two seam allowance lines that we drew on there and we're going to pin along that line. So now that this is pinned in place, it's going to look a little something like that. So you can see 
Oh, it's already starting to stand out to give you that extra space at the bust. Now we're going to have to take this and do a quick tissue fitting. Okay, so now that we have our tissue piece pinned along that seam allowance, what we're going to do is we're going to hold it up. Remember that you have a 5 8 seam allowance up at the top, so hold it up there and then bring it to the center of your body. And this is really actually helpful when you have more than one person doing it. So already I can tell a couple of things when I'm looking at this. All right, so let me just tippy toe a bit here. This top is not going to be anywhere near as long as I need it to be. Um, so I am going to add two inches onto the bottom of this top just to give me the length that I really want for my crop. If you look at the actual pattern piece here, you can tell that that's not hitting her just under her bust. She actually has some space there. So I'm gonna add two inches to the bottom of both of these patterns, three and six. And actually, I'm also going to need that additional two inches on the two back pieces as well. Another thing that I'm noticing here is that this armhole is a little low. Honestly, I feel like this armhole is a lot low because remember, we're going to have a 5 8 seam allowance, which means that this armhole is going to come down to about right here. Well, that's unacceptable for me because that's already showing quite a bit of my bra. So I'm going to raise this up by about an inch and a quarter. No, I'm going to bring it up by about an inch and a half because I do want a closer fitting armhole and I'm going to extend that to the front as well. And let me see how the side fits. Actually, let me line it back up. Make sure that your pattern's not getting too wonky. This is pulling a little further away from my actual side seam. I'm gonna add about half an inch just to bring it back to meet me down here at the side seam. So those are the changes that I'm going to add. Let's add them now. Let's start making changes to this piece, which is the side front bodice, um, which is piece number six. So I've got some paper and I've got scissors and some tape. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tape some paper underneath this pattern piece. So I'm going to grab my seam gauge and my Sharpie just so that I can measure out the distances that I need to add. So over here on the side, I'm going to measure up about an inch and a half. I'm going to draw that in. And then I'm going to connect the side seam here, just like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and continue to do the inch and a half all the way up the rest of the armhole. We'll shape this a little better when we get to the second piece. Now go ahead and just draw in, connect those lines, make your armhole look pretty. It doesn't have to be exact. Now we're going to deal with a side seam allowance here that I need to add, which is a half inch. So I am going to just come in and do the same exact thing with the side seam. I'm drawing in my half inch seam allowance. And then I'm going to connect it so that it connects up at the arm side and just draw in the rest of the lines. Whoa, let me cut it correctly. Okay, now I am going to tape this to my, to the bottom of my pattern because I need to add two inches to the length as well. This was hitting me right under my bust, which really isn't the look that I'm going for.
And then we're going to add the two inches the same way we added it around the rest of the pattern. Did you see that? I almost missed the additional space that I had included. Here, let me just... There. So now we have two inches from here to here, a half inch here, and at the very top up here we've added one and a half inches right here. Now this is going to get smaller as we go into the next piece, but we're going to we're going to work that out here in a second. Finish cutting out your pattern piece. And this is what the final piece looks like right now. Don't worry about this curve right here because we're going to clean that up when we deal with this pattern piece. Now for piece number three, we don't need to do as many changes. We need to add the two inches down here at the bottom. Let's measure out our two inches. I'll tape on the paper and measure it out. Okay, so there's the two inches on the very bottom of our pattern. We don't need to do anything to this curve because this is where the bust is going to join in that side bust, but we do need to add some additional space up here at the top so we can play around with that. So let me go ahead and cut this out and then we're going to tape on some paper onto this top bit. This part is going to be just a little different. We're going to take this piece here and we're going to line it up at the very top here. So. Try to get that seam allowance lined up. This is how this armhole is going to look. Let me grab a pin. And so both of these pieces, I've accounted for the 5 8 seam allowance right up here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at a smaller seam allowance here and grade up to this bigger one, right? This doesn't have to be precise. It's just what you think looks like a pretty decent arm side. I like to start at about where these little like circle, circle dots are right here. So I'm gonna start about there. And I'm just going to clean up this curve a little bit. That's how I want this piece to look. Now I'm going to cut this out. And this is what our two pieces look like, right? Well, that looks wonky, right? I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit. I'm going to follow this line all the way up. So let me just draw it in to be consistent. I'm going to cut off right there at that line. And then for this piece, I'm going to follow this line and cut it off there. So this is what I'm rolling with right here. These are my front pieces. Oh, one last thing. So I did note that I wanted a little bit more space for my girls to accommodate the fullness of my bust right in through this area. So, what I'm going to do is between these two notches right here, so between that notch and this notch, I am going to take a half inch seam allowance. The regular seam allowance is five eighths for this pattern. By taking a half inch seam allowance here, it's going to give me one eighth on this side, an eighth on this side, and that's going to turn out being a quarter inch of additional space for my bust just in that area. 
So I will start sewing at a 5 8 seam allowance, coming down to a half inch right here. I'm going to sew this entire curve at a half inch, and then I'm going to come back out to the 5 8 seam allowance. Okay, so now that we've got all of our adjustments done to our two front pieces, we're going to need to match up the back pieces. So grab the side bodice front, or the bodice side front, piece six, and we are going to grab piece eight, which is the corresponding back piece, right? We're going to match up the bottoms, those, let's match up these little notches as well. You can see my back piece is just a bit too long here. I've already added on the amount, but you want it to match up with your front. So I'm just going to mark this out right now. So that's what the back piece looks like for the back side. And then grab the other back piece and make the same adjustment to the arm side like we did for the front. Match up the bottoms, match up the notches. Future Maddie here. I forgot to actually mention that you should line up the seam allowances along with those notches, just like we did on the front pieces, so that way we can get a nice shaped arm side when it's all sewn up. So my notches are lined up. The edges are lined up. This new edge right here is matching with the side front bodice and it's all drawn in. So just go ahead and draw the new arm side line and then you are ready to cut this all out in your lining. I don't know about you, I don't like making tons and tons of different versions of the same top just to get the fit right. And this is gonna get you pretty darn close. So after you have your lining cut out, go ahead and try on your entire lining piece. Don't forget to stay stitch around the arm side and the neckline so that those things don't get stretched out of place. Try it on and see how you like the fit. If you need to make any additional like tweaks to that actual lining, take a little bit away here, add a little bit here, you can do it at this point with the lining and then when you've got all of your pattern pieces just figured out this is where I want them to be, go ahead and cut it out in your final fabric. Just go for it. Be brave and just cut into your fabric. You're gonna have a beautiful fitting garment, okay? So I hope that this tutorial was helpful. Let me know in the description box below what you think about this tutorial and if you're going to try it. And you all, until next time, I sincerely hope that you find joy and have a wonderful day.